The environment in a horror game is one of the most essential elements to creating a perfect experience. And it's equally important as the story itself. Your surroundings when you play a horror game are crucial in affecting your mindset and making you nervous to proceed, regardless of whether there's a physical threat or not. Some environments, like hospitals and asylums, are known for being among the scariest places to be alone at night. And this is probably because we relate them to pain and death. However, there's a reason why haunted houses in particular are the most common environment for horror games and movies, and are also considered the most effective in making us feel scared and alarmed. To understand why, you need to first know that in the logic of horror, the more casual and familiar the thing is, the more it becomes frightening when you see its dark side. In real life, our homes are the places where we feel the most safe and comfortable. But simultaneously, the shock of fear becomes even harder when the danger and threat are within the confines of our own homes, and there is no other safe place to escape to. This is the same reason why women ghosts are the most common and disturbing antagonists in horror games and movies as well. In our minds, women are not known for being dangerous or a threat to our lives. But this positive assumption becomes absolutely uncomfortable when we see them portrayed in the opposite manner, because it feels like we're not ready for it. We don't feel this with male antagonists because we already associate men with violence and psychotic behavior. Anyway, we already made videos about the most unsettling female antagonists in horror games, and there's no need to spend more time on this aspect. Today, we are going to focus on haunted houses and list 10 specific ones that I personally believe are very memorable and immersive in a way that makes us scared just of being inside them. So get your cup of coffee ready and prepare to become afraid of your own place from now on. Contemp is a mysterious short horror game that came out in 2017, and it blew people's minds away with its insane visuals. The game starts in a forest, and your mission is to go straight to a house in the middle of nowhere. But in order to enter, you need to get a key first from the cabinet outside. Once you enter this bizarre house, you'll feel like you're going into a place where there's no coming back, because it looks like something dark happened here. The house is perfectly designed to look genuine, and the furniture played a big role in making it look as if real people were here, and something terrifying caused them to vanish. There's a show running on TV that seems very casual when you listen to it, but it's also very disturbing, considering how everything looks like a mess, and there's no one to watch it in the first place. But I'm told it's not easy to spin around on your head. And health professionals say it may not be safe either. They're seeing some injuries. The game doesn't provide a clear backstory about the house or the events that unfolded in it, but the photographs on the table speak more than a thousand words. They portray a beautiful woman who obviously lived in the 50s or 60s, but it also shows a faceless man who seems to be her husband. The fact that she's carrying a baby in a photo with him proves this speculation too. It's obvious that there is a crime happening behind the walls of this house, and it appears that the husband is the perpetrator. He clearly did something horrible to his wife, and her soul is still inhabiting the place. Anyway, regardless of what happened in this house, the main fact that we can see is that it's really creepy and chilling, and I would really appreciate it if the developer made a longer version of the game. But I don't think it's going to happen, because the developer himself has been missing since 2017, 
and he never created anything after this project, which might mean that he's the husband and he's hiding from police or something. sitting in a locked bedroom and could only listen we heard the knife stabs until their screams stopped the police decided that our parents were accidentally killed during the robbery I never believed it we were picked up by the only remaining relative in the States our grandmother a medium she taught us I still remember rituals prayers and constant promises to reveal what happened to our parents. Prognostic is a very underrated game in my opinion, and I feel that it passed by under the radar of most gamers during its release last year in 2022. In this unfamiliar game, you take on the role of an orphan who returns to the house of his deceased grandmother to uncover the secret of their family's death. He must accept their legacy and become a prognostic, which is a highly talented medium, in order to find those responsible for the deaths of his parents and stop the supernatural madness that is engulfing the town. The game is challenging and requires you to focus on your surroundings, but you can't imagine how sophisticated the house is. The abode is large and it has so many rooms where you can find necessary clues, but it also feels so dire and unwelcoming as if something terrifying is lurking somewhere and doesn't want you inside. The place also has so many puzzles that you need to solve and secrets that you must uncover to know the history of your family. So this haunted house clearly deserves to be on this list and the game in general deserves some acknowledgement. note it's probably because we're all dead what's in this house surpassed anything I had imagined The Dark Occult is not an unpopular game by any means, and it actually caused some buzz when it was released in 2017. The original name of the game was The Conjuring, and I think most of you are familiar with that title, but the developers had to change it later on due to copyright problems. Anyway, in the game you are sent to the Atkinson house to investigate unusual happenings surrounding the death of the owner. However, you discover that the house is infested with demonic creatures and that you are not alone, as you thought. The intro is very disturbing in itself, and it gives a weird feeling that the story was inspired by real events and not fiction. Some people assume that paranormal phenomena are the cause of several disappearances and murders committed in the house of Atkins. But once you start delving into this mansion and investigating it, you'll realize that it's basically a maze that has no end or clear way out. But what makes things even worse is the insane amount of weird entities that you can face in every area of the building. The visuals are very impressive and they make the abode look like a vampire's mansion from the 19th century. 
The protagonist here also experiences hallucinations and apparitions of people he knows, which makes him even more lost and confused. Wait! Where did he go? I have a bad feeling. Strange things are happening in this house. It seems like terrible things happened in the residence before, and the Atkinson family had a dark and harrowing history. Another fact that you should keep in mind is that this game is relatively long compared to other indie games. This means that you'll spend a long time exploring this large mansion, and with every step, you'll feel like you're being watched from every side. So if you're a horror gamer who's interested in getting lost in a chilling haunted mansion, with a design that's pleasing to the eye, then this is a game to keep in mind in case you haven't played it already. Just like Contemp, Bloody Room is also an enigmatic short horror game that came out of nowhere. And no one knows if it will ever have a longer form. The gameplay starts with the protagonist finding himself in the corridor of a dark, eerie house. He then finds a flashlight, and before you even get familiar with the place, you will hear a spooky, realistic knock on the door that will make your heart skip a couple beats. Regardless of how short the game is, you can't deny that this house was designed in a talented way that makes it very effective in making you nervous even when you just walk around. The backstory of the place eventually gets revealed, and it turns out that a family of a mother, daughter and father used to live here, but sadly, a tragic event happened to them. The husband was very abusive towards his wife, and he ended up murdering her at some point. After committing his ugly murder, he left his wife's body in the bathroom until her 13-year-old daughter found her one day. She tried to call for help, but unfortunately her violent father was already in the house and he caught her while she was running away to the exit door. He killed her by drowning her in the bathtub with cold blood, making her soul join her moms in the house. It's obvious that the man had serious mental issues and he couldn't control his anger and emotions. The game doesn't provide any more details, but regardless of the story itself, the house remains very memorable, and it stuck in my mind personally, so that's why I wanted to add it to the list. Resident Evil 7 is one of the most unique installments in the series, 
if not the most special and psychologically scary game in the entire franchise. One of the reasons for that is its first-person perspective, but also its distressing characters and story that feel nothing like the prior installments. Anyway, our focus today is not the deep story, but rather the horrifying house where the main part of the gameplay takes place, which is the Baker House. It's basically a derelict plantation mansion in Dolby, Louisiana, owned by the Baker family, which is a nice family that had their life turned upside down when they found a crazy biologically modified little girl who turned them into brainless, deadly monsters. The protagonist, Ethan Winters, arrives at the Baker house in search of his missing wife, Mia. However, he soon discovers that the Bakers have been infected and that he is their main target now. Even if we ignore the threat that comes from them, the house alone is enough to trouble you because every part of it symbolizes the craziness of the family. You can find insects all over the place and bloodstains on the walls, which might refer to previous victims. But despite the scary side, it's also a piece of art when you observe it from an architectural point of view. It has a classic design that makes it very suitable for horror, but it also makes you feel the normal life that the bakers had before they transformed. That's why it definitely deserves a spot on this list. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired of your bullshit, girl. I need to hide. I need to hide. Why are you putting me through this? What have I done to deserve this except open my home and feed you? Mr. Farber. Good. Time to play detective. What is this? Song of Horror is probably one of the most underrated games ever, or at least in the last 10 years. Song of Horror is a Lovecraftian horror game that tells the story of the Husher family, who have disappeared without a trace. When Daniel Noyes was appointed to find out what happened, he disappeared himself. In the game, you can take control of different characters who must investigate the Husher mansion and discover the truth behind the family's disappearance. But in the process, you have to fear something called the Presence, which is a mysterious entity you cannot fight, and it's basically behind all the paranormal events that happened. But if we focus on the environment itself and how the investigation works, you'll understand how beautiful this game is. The camera view is incredibly designed to make you aware of everything that might happen around you, and the fancy mansion makes it thrilling to investigate its rooms. Furthermore, the scary thing here is that you don't know exactly what you are confronting. The presence is basically a horrific entity bound to a song capable of inflicting madness and nightmares upon those who listen to it. And those who surrender to it are captured by its presence and added to its mass, unless they delete themselves, and you obviously know what I mean by that. So it's really unsettling to roam in this house, knowing that there's something living there and that it can appear and possess you at any point. The fact that you can also live the experience from the perspectives of different characters makes the atmosphere look very interesting and fresh each time. The sounds are also terrifying and force you to stay on high alert all the time. So if you haven't tried this game, then it's probably time to give it a try and know what I'm talking about by yourself. Oh, there's a wardrobe! Get in!
Fatal Frame is one of the most memorable horror franchises for gamers who went through the PlayStation 2 era. The game is known by the name Project Zero in Europe and Australia, but in Japan, it's just called Zero. Regardless of the name, the common thing is that the experience is uniquely terrifying in a traditional Japanese way. This is what makes the Himuro Mansion here a very unique setting for a horror story. It's a centuries-old mansion located in the Himuro mountain area in the southern region of Japan and is surrounded by five shrines, which are said to seal away the evil spirits that reside within. The mansion is said to be haunted by the ghosts of the Himuro family, who were murdered in a ritual known as the Strangling Ritual. The ritual was performed in order to contain the evil spirits that resided inside the mansion, but obviously things went completely wrong. In Fatal Frame 2, the mansion is visited by the two sisters, Mio and Mayu Amakura, after they came back to Minakami village in order to find their favorite childhood play spot. The Himuro Mansion mission in Fatal Frame 2 is a thrilling journey, as the game features the Camera Obscura, a device that has the ability to exorcise spirits. The mansion is dark, claustrophobic, and filled with strange and disturbing imagery that makes your time in it uncomfortable. And the ghosts of the Himuro family are grotesque and terrifying, especially since their story is twisted and bizarre. And if you think the fictional mansion is not ominous enough, then keep in mind that there are claims that suggest that the mansion is actually real and that it's located in a real village in Japan, where many murders happened a long time ago to perform certain rituals. We might make a dedicated video soon to discuss these claims, but for today, I believe the Himuro Mansion is a logical addition to the list, and PS2 gamers definitely agree with that. The Evil Within 2 is the sequel to one of the most interesting survival horror games of the last decade, and even though some people might see it as less impressive compared to the original, it remains a solid experience that deserves our attention. The game involves diverse environments that the protagonist, Sebastian, must venture into in order to figure out what's happening around him. But one of these uncanny environments is the haunted house at 336 Cedar Avenue in Union, which is home to a mysterious creature known as Anima. The house is in a state of disrepair, with boarded up windows and a dilapidated exterior. The interior is dark, with narrow hallways and small rooms. The walls are covered in strange symbols and occult markings, which indicate that some messed up rituals used to be performed here. However, the existence of Anima in it remains the most dreadful factor because she is a powerful and creepy ghost, and no one knows her origin. She is often seen as a shadowy figure, but she can also take on the appearance of a young woman with long black hair. She is known to torment and kill those who enter her house, and Sebastian was supposed to be one of her victims, but your mission as a player is to prevent this from happening. Sebastian must investigate the haunted house in order to find out more about Anima and how to stop her. And to do so, he needs to explore the house from top to bottom, solving puzzles and defeating enemies along the way. One of the main issues with this woman is that you can't really kill her or even fight her directly. You can only avoid her and make sure that she doesn't hear you or see you especially when she's mumbling with her seemingly innocent singing while moving around. So if you haven't played The Evil Within 2 yet, then I can assure you that you'll have a hard time dealing with Anima and figuring out what the history of her disturbing house is.
Did I just imagine that? No. That was... What was that thing? Was that real or all in my mind? I tried hard to avoid putting this one on the list due to the fact that it was mentioned a lot in other videos and that it's always ranked number one, but I couldn't ignore it, especially in a subject about haunted houses and also because the house here is one of the most iconic in the genre. PT stands for Playable Teaser or Playable Trailer and it's basically a short demo that was released in 2014 to give us a glimpse of a big game called Silent Hills that was planned to be released later, or at least that's what was planned. The story is not clearly revealed in the short experience, and even the identity of the protagonist remains unknown. But there are multiple hints and clues that can help you piece together what happened in this chilling house, especially if you hear the man on the radio. However, as you go through the corridor over and over again, you'll notice that the environment is becoming more and more sinister and nightmarish. The biggest threat in the walkthrough comes from a woman named Lisa, who was a resident of the house. Lisa was a happy wife and mother, but for some reason, her husband's mental state started to collapse. He eventually killed her by shooting her in the right eye, and he also killed his kids before adding himself to the list of the dead as well. I don't know why husbands in these games tend to be crazy, but that's what happened, according to the radio. Anyway, after this terrifying event, it appears that the souls of the entire family became imprisoned in this house and manifested in its rooms. You can even see the unborn baby of Lisa because she was pregnant when her husband committed his crime. It's also suggested that the protagonist is the husband in question and the entire experience is basically a mental punishment for him, where he's forced to relive the consequences of what he did. He's stuck in a loop where he must go through the same bedeviled corridor over and over, seeing his dead wife and being hunted by her spirit. So this house is obviously the last place you want to find yourself in, and it's also the reason why corridors became popular in indie horror games. This game has been mentioned dozens of times by Lucas and Nathan in multiple videos, but I believe that it's time for me to take my chance and talk about it personally. When it was released two years ago, it caught the attention of every horror gamer because it somehow felt very different. The game is set in an apartment complex from the Soviet era, where you take on the role of a young man who must enter his deceased grandfather's apartment number 64 to collect his photo album. However, after entering the apartment, you find yourself imprisoned and unable to leave, and this is when the real nightmare begins. The strong point of the experience comes from the fact that the fear is not caused by a direct confrontation with a scary entity. It actually comes from being inside the apartment itself while waiting for something to happen. You need to control yourself and not panic when paranormal stuff starts to show up. This includes lights turning off on themselves and a mysterious room that becomes nightmarish whenever you approach it. However, things get very disturbing when you spot a glimpse of a huge mysterious creature looking at you from behind before hiding away. 
This event serves as a confirmation for you to realize that you're not alone and that there is someone in the place who doesn't look human at all. This will make the next 30 minutes of your life more stressful than ever because you will keep walking around the flat waiting for another sign or searching for a way to escape. And also, let's not forget the creepy doll on the bed who keeps following your movements with its eyes as if it's possessed. The Soviet design of the apartment plays a big role in making the situation immersive and realistic because we all know that the Soviet era is scary in itself. According to the developer, the focus was to trigger claustrophobia in the player, which is the fear of closed spaces. I personally believe that he succeeded in this aspect, because when you play this game and put the headset on your head, you'll feel nervous right away and wish for the experience to end. Even though many people argue that the first hour of the game is way scarier than the rest, I still believe that the experience overall is worth it and this specific apartment remains stuck in your mind no matter how many other games you play. Okay guys, I think you got the point and I think the video is getting longer than expected. Tell me in the comments below what's your opinion on my choices on this list and also please give me any ideas for upcoming videos. Also tell me what you think about my style in these videos and whether you think I'm better than Lucas and Nathan or not. Furthermore, I forgot to mention that I intentionally skipped amazing games like Visage and Hellseed because I feel that many of you are familiar with them already and also because the list was already packed. Anyway, give this video a like and enjoy the rest of your day or night, depending on your time zone.